What's up nerds, Ina Beta here coming at you with another Slay the Spire guide. Today's video is the first in a series of class guides, and we're kicking things off with a detailed look at the Silent. After 1100 hours in the Spire, the Silent is by far my favorite class, and I happen to believe she's the best of the mix. Whether you're brand new to the Spire or already experienced, my goal in this video is to help you better understand what makes her unique, improve your understanding of her kit and mechanics, and prepare you for the challenges of the Spire with a look at some of her strongest synergies and potential weaknesses. And before we jump in, I just want to thank you for supporting the channel and remind you to subscribe for more awesome guides like this one, as well as a host of other content we're doing on Slay the Spire. I also invite you to come hang out with me in the Nerd Squad three to four nights a week over on twitch.tv slash Beta. We'd love to see you there and on our Discord, all of which is linked below the video. And without further ado, here's my guide to the silent. As described on the official wiki, the silent is a deadly huntress from the Foglands who eradicates foes with daggers and poisons. She's designed around a rogue fantasy build, and she weakens her foes with numerous cuts and poisons, while using cheap tricks and agility to avoid their attacks. She starts with a relatively low 70 HP, and much of her strength is derived from her ability to draw and discard, ensuring that she'll always be one step ahead of her enemy. And I find that description to be mostly accurate. The Silent does feel quite roguish and agile in both aesthetic and playstyle, which I love. She starts out each of her runs with the Ring of the Snake, which lets her draw two more cards at the start of each fight. This relic has obvious synergies with other relics like Gambling Chip and the Lantern, and is a starter relic that gets even better as the run goes on. And while it does tend to gain value throughout a run, the Ring of the Snake isn't so great that you shouldn't ever consider ditching it for a random boss relic at Niao if there isn't a better option available. Oh Given the power of boss relics and the existence of Bag of Preparation, which is literally Ring of the Snake, I find myself boss swapping on the Silent pretty often nowadays and usually not regretting it. The Silent starting deck is the largest of any character at 12 cards compared to 10. It's a mix of basic strikes and defends, along with Survivor, which blocks and discards, and a zero-cost neutralize, which applies one stack of weakness to help further reduce incoming damage. But her real power comes from her ability to set up bursty turns, discard less useful cards, and avoid incoming damage. She's capable of setting up some very powerful turns by using an arsenal of cards like well laid Plans, Phantasmal Killer, or Bullet Time. She's also quite good at making enemies do less damage with cards like Piercing Whale, Crippling Cloud, Malaise, and other damage mitigators. And she can go the distance in very long fights by building up scaling damage and generating a lot of block across many turns with high dexterity and block cards. She can also become a spooky ghost that outright negates large amounts of damage with Wraith Form or her class-specific potion Ghost in a Jar, both of which grant turns of intangibility. Now that we have a basic idea of who the Silent is, I want to make it clear that I won't be breaking down all of her cards one by one in this guide, because I think that discussing each card outside of the context of specific decks, synergies, or fights simply isn't very informative. Instead, we'll dive into the Silent's tools in the context of five different categories that I think apply to each of the different classes, what I think the Silent does well and maybe not so well, and finally, I'll go over a few more niche cards that don't generally fit into most builds, but can be very powerful with the right synergies. So let's jump into the first of those five major categories, starting with something that I find to be a major strength of the Silent, Damage Mitigation. Overall, compared to other classes, the Silent actually has less cards in her kit that grant her block immediately, and these cards tend to block for less damage per energy spent. The upside is that her block cards don't exhaust, don't add statuses to your deck, and with the exception of Escape Plan, aren't situational either, meaning you can count on them giving you block when you need it with no strings attached. She also has access to Dexterity Scaling with Footwork, adding more value to any block card you add to her deck. In other words, blocking with the Silent can be more reliable compared to other classes. Additionally, the Silent possesses the most weakness applying cards in her kit compared to any other class. Her class-specific relic, Paper Crane, coupled with her cards often applying debuffs to enemies for artifact removal, makes applying weakness a great source of damage mitigation for the Silent. 
Add in AoE mitigation cards like Crippling Cloud and Piercing Whale, as well as Malaise, After Image, Blur, Wraith Form, and a host of other options. And you'll see that the Silent produces a ton of damage mitigation that can last over multiple rounds. From the beginning of each run, the Silent's deck is more defensively minded. As stated prior, she's the only class with a starter card that applies weakness to enemies, and she starts with more defend cards in her deck than any other character at 5 versus 4. The flip side to this is that she's the only character without a starting card that improves her damage output appreciably. This is the main reason why the Act 1 Elite Goblin Knob can be so difficult for the Silent. Knob punishes skill-based decks, and the Silent starts with pretty low damage output. Speaking of damage, it's really important to get damage on lock as soon as possible with this class, or you're going to have a really tough time surviving elite fights. As I just mentioned, since Knob exists, the Silent is usually starting most runs by adding a few attacks to her deck. She has some decent damage in attack cards like Predator, Skewer, or Eviscerate, but she excels at generating and playing a lot of zero-cost, low-damage attacks like Slice and Shivs. All these cards can really shine after gaining just a little bit of strength, but this is generally harder to attain on the Silent compared to other classes. She has some other ways to bump up the damage on zero-cost attacks, mainly her Shivs, to help compensate for this. But generally, attack damage per energy spent is going to be a bit lower on the Silent compared to other classes. However, she has a unique way to compensate for this lack of attack damage. Enter Poison Damage. Poison is a debuff that does damage to enemies equal to the stacks of poison on them at the beginning of their turn. Poison damage you apply to enemies increases the stack amount accordingly. Poison stacks tick down by one every time they do damage, so you generally need a few poison cards in a deck or an upgraded Noxious Fumes to see appreciable damage output across a fight. Catalyst modifies poison scaling damage and makes it extremely bursty, often finishing a fight in just a few turns, and is usually a card you upgrade as soon as possible after you grab it. Poison damage is further augmented by class-specific relics. Sneko Skull lets you apply one more poison damage each time you apply poison to a target, and the Specimen lets leftover poison stacks on a defeated enemy be applied to another enemy in the fight. One note of caution about poison damage. It applies to enemies at the beginning of their turn, but it can seem like it's the end of your turn. So if you're planning to end a fight with poison damage, be sure to put some block in place before you click that end turn button. Now that brings us to the issue of dealing with multiple enemies at once, which I call AoE response. Dagger Spray and Die 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 do okay at helping the silent deal AoE damage, if she gets a build with some strength to it, Dagger Spray can be that much better. Die 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 is nice in that it does decent AoE damage and then is out of the deck so she can get on to doing more important things. Crippling Cloud is flexible since it can be nice AoE poison application and mitigation or two facts of artifact strip to enemies instead. In addition to these cards, the Silent has some of the best AoE clear in the game with Noxious Fumes and Corpse Explosion. Noxious Fumes is a power that continuously applies poison stacks to all enemies in combat every turn, leading to considerable poison damage after just a few turns, especially if upgraded and working in tandem with other poison cards. Corpse Explosion plays off the decent single target damage of the Silent, turning it into AoE damage based on the HP of the target you apply it to. It's a debuff, so artifact stacks can interfere, but with her ability to tear through artifact stacks with all of her status application, plus the fact that Corpse Explosion can remove two artifact stacks by itself, the Silent generally doesn't have too much trouble applying Corpse Explosion where she wants to, when she wants to, and then finishing the fight very quickly. I want to stress that Corpse Explosion is probably the best AoE damage card in the game, and I am not alone on that. It's simply a snap pick for most decks, and the only time I've considered not taking a Corpse Explosion is when I already have one. Yep, we got there. Now that we talked about damage and AoE clear, let's focus on hand control. Every class in the Spire has some options to draw cards with, and the Silent is no different with cards like Acrobatics, Backflip, and Expertise at her disposal. Many of her draw cards require discarding a card too, which I consider card cycling instead of card draw, as it sometimes doesn't net you more cards in your hand. This leads us to another unique strength of this class, discarding unwanted cards, which eight different cards in the Silent's kit allow her to do in a controlled manner. While often discarding cards might sound problematic, it's typically an easy choice to make and is the primary way that the Silent deals with curses and statuses that are added to her deck, as opposed to exhausting or scrying past them like other classes. 
Cards like Dagger Throw, Calculated Gamble, Prepared, and Tools of the Trade are examples of this ability to card cycle, and are activators for cards like Reflex and Tactician, which net her card draw or energy, respectively, whenever she discards them, enabling some very productive turns for her. Lastly, her class-specific relics Tough Bandages and Tingsha synergize with all this discard too. They generate block and damage respectively for each card that's discarded, allowing her to lean into discard mechanics even more. This is bullet times. Scaling damage on the Silent is mainly poison-oriented as discussed before. However, if she gets a hold of Shuriken and leans into that with shift generators like her other class-specific Relic Ninja Scroll, or cards like Infinite Blades, Blade Dance, or Cloak and Dagger, letting her play a lot of attacks on a turn. She has the potential to scale up 1-2 to two strength each turn in some fights. Couple this potential strength game with her multi-attack cards and possibly Terror, which applies vulnerability to an enemy for the rest of the fight, and she may be able to put out some really impressive attack damage. However, since all this is tied to specific relics, this is typically less common for the Silent. Now, a hallmark source of scaling mitigation for the Silent is Footwork a power that gives her a flat bonus to dexterity, adding that value to each block card played. Some of her block cards, like Dodge and Roll and Blur, actually benefit from dexterity across multiple turns, making it even more important. For most runs, Footwork is another snap pick as it just improves the Silent's defensive abilities so much. As discussed in other guides of mine, drawing and playing more cards on a turn is potent scaling for any class, and the Silent is no exception. You can add in cards like Concentrate, Outmaneuver, and Bullet Time along with all the Silent's card draw options to facilitate some ridiculously productive turns with consistency. Now that we've covered the Silent's kit in a more general sense, let's take a moment to dive into some of her more niche cards and their applications. I think of all cards in Slay the Spire on a spectrum of general to niche. General cards can be added to most any build at some point and be somewhat useful. Niche cards need some pretty specific things in place for them to add to your current build. The Silence Kit, like every class's, includes cards that I consider more niche, so let's look at just five of these cards a bit more, as they don't fit neatly into the categories we've discussed, but can be very powerful when taken together or with other synergies. Riddle with Holes hits five times, but it's kind of a ho-hum damage card outside of pretty niche synergies like Increased Strength, which doesn't happen as often on the Silent, or in tandem with the next card you likely won't take most runs, and Venom. This is an attack-dependent poison scaler, but there are generally better sources of poison applications to be had, and this power gets shut down pretty hard by enemies that block a lot. This can, however, augment the effectiveness of multi-hit cards like the one we just mentioned, or a very shiv-heavy deck if you consistently get past block. This power also has an interesting synergy with Sadistic Nature as well, which just got a significant buff in the most recent patch. Accuracy is literally a playable curse without shiv generators, but makes shivs do ridiculous damage if you have them. Accuracy also just got a buff in the most recent patch, so it's even more attractive if you're already throwing shivs around. Thousand Cuts can help do some passive AoE damage, especially if you play many cards per turn, but in most decks there are simply better choices for AoE damage like Noxious Fumes or Corpse Explosion, the ultimate AoE response. Lastly, Storm of Steel immediately discarding your entire hand for shivs can be nice shiv and discard synergy, but it interferes with another strength of the Silent class, holding on to specific cards with well-laid plans or runic pyramid for the turns that you need them. But with Thousand Cuts and maybe an Accuracy or three, this could be strong at times. Hopefully you can see that cards like these sound powerful and can do really wonderful things when working with one another, but without these or other synergies, they simply don't perform well and should be taken with that in mind. As with any run with any character in the Spire, it's difficult to provide a general strategy for success as there are just so many factors to consider every step of the way as you ascend. As always, it all depends. More specifically to the Silent, I don't recommend Poison or Shivs over the other. I mention this because these are two often mentioned quote-unquote archetypes or builds for the Silent, which is a line of thinking I would strongly argue against. In most runs with the Silent, you'll likely utilize some attack damage and poison damage along with all the versatile mitigation she has to overcome the challenges before you. Relegating yourself to considering only two archetypes of silent play artificially limits your ability to think flexibly when evaluating builds. As with any playthrough of Slay the Spire, 
Your success all comes down to learning the fights and events and becoming better at making the correct evaluations of your build each time you choose to change it. It works no different with the silent. As such, I hope this video has given you an overview into who the Silent is, what her strengths are, and some of the things that are more situational for her each time she climbs the spire. Oh Don't forget to let us hear your answer to one of the merchant's questions down in the comments. Hit that subscribe button for more guides like these and other awesome Spire content. Catch me and the Nerd Squad live three to four nights a week over on twitch.tv slash iNoveda. And hey, join that Discord and let us hear from you there too. As always, thanks for watching and good luck in the Spire.